Okay, class, today we're in section 9.6, extension. Derive the quadratic formula. Derive the quadratic formula. Your goal, solve quadratic equations and check solutions. You have learned how to find solutions of quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. You can use the method of completing the square and the quotient property of radicals to derive the quadratic formula. Well, the first thing you do is you write the standard form of a quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Next, you subtract c from each side. So minus c minus c. So now you have ax squared plus bx is equal to a negative c. Next, you divide each side by a. And remember, a cannot be zero. So we divide each part by a. So divide by a here, divide by a here, and divide by a here. a divided by a is just 1, so you're left with x squared. bx divided by a is going to be b over a times x. Or another way of saying it is to simply say b times x over a. And of course, a negative c divided by a, you can end up with a negative c over a. Okay, now we're going to complete the square. And we're going to do that by adding b over 2a squared to each side in order to complete the square. So I'm looking at my x term, my bx term. All right, and my bx term is b over a times x. So I'm looking at b over a. So what do I do? I divide by 2, divide by 2, and square. So now I have b over 2a squared. What I do to one side, I must also do to the other side. Once again, all we're doing here is completing the square. This is our bx term. It's just that when we're working with numbers. This is our bx term. All right, so we're going to have b divided by 2. Put it 2 at the bottom, so we end up with 2a. All right, so what we do to one side, we do to the other side. And not, don't forget, we had to square it. So right now, we have a perfect square trinomial. And we're going to write that as a binomial, as a square binomial. So that's going to end up being x plus b over 2a squared. x plus b over 2a squared. And on this side, we're going to have negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Okay, we just bring that negative c over a down. And then b to the second power is equal to b squared. 2a to the second power is equal to 4 times a squared. 2 squared is 4. a to the second power is a squared. Next, we're going to simplify the right side. So a negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared ends up equaling b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. All right, now for those of you who cannot see how to simplify the right side, right, I'm going to give you a little shortcut on what they're doing. All you're doing here is adding fractions. And when you add fractions, your denominators must be the same. Notice this denominator is a, and this denominator is 4a squared. So you got to make them common. So now look at this denominator and look at this denominator. What can I do to this one to make it the same as that one? Right? If I multiply this by 4a, I will end up with 4a squared. So 4a times a is equal to 4a squared. All right? Now, what I do to the bottom, I also must do to the top. So once again, my denominator here is 4a squared. My denominator here is a. I want to add them so they must be the same denominator. If I multiply this a by 4a, I would end up with 4a squared. Okay, now what I do to the bottom, I'm also going to do to the top. So therefore, on the top, I would end up with 4a times a negative c. That's going to give me a negative 4ac. On the bottom, like we said, we got 4a times a. That's going to give us 4a squared. 
Now, since this denominator is already the same, we don't touch it. We're actually multiplying by 1, but there's no need to show that. So this stays the same. So here I got b squared over 4a squared. Now my denominators are the same. Now I can add these two. Now you notice they're not alike, so there's nothing to combine. All we can do is represent it. So negative 4ac plus b squared all over 4a squared. All right, now we're going to put it in the same order that they put it in because we know that addition is commutative. So therefore, I'm going to say b squared minus 4ac. Notice the b is positive here, and it's still positive there. And notice that the negative 4ac is negative here, and it's negative there. All that's over 4a squared. So now we're at this point right here. So you can easily see what we did when we simplified on the right side. All right, now from there, we're going to use the quotient property of radicals. The quotient property of radicals. What that means is I can take this one radical and split it up in terms of my denominator and in terms of my numerator. So I'm going to rewrite it as such. The square root of b squared minus 4ac over the square root of 4a squared. Once again, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that's this, over the square root of 4a, uh, the square root of 4 times a squared. Now, after doing that, I can do the square root down here. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of a squared? a. All right, once again, what's the square root of 4? 2. Square root of a squared? a. Okay, now we're going to subtract b over 2a from each side. We're going to subtract b over 2a from each side. Okay, now when we subtract the negative 2 over ba from each side, we're going to get a positive b over 2a minus b over 2a. So that's going to be gone. That's canceled out. So we're just left with x. Now over here, we got b over 2a. But remember, our denominator over here was also 2a. So now our denominators are the same. That means we can combine what's on top. All right. What kind of b is on top? That's a negative b. So we put that first. All right. And then we write down what we have here. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's what they wrote right there. And all that's going to be over 2a. Once again, remember, your denominators are the same. That means you can combine. You can't add them. You can't. I'll put them together. All you can do is represent them because they're not, they're not the same. So negative b, that's one term. And the other term is plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's what you got. All that over 2a. And that is how you derive the quadratic equation. Example 1, solve an equation. x squared minus 6x plus 3 is equal to 0. Solution x squared minus 6x plus 3 is equal to 0. You do the same thing you did in section 9.6 using the quadratic equation. The exact same thing. Identify a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to 3. So you end up with x is equal to the negative of a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of a negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. All that's over 2 times 1. You simplify and you end up with 6 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 2. Then you end up with 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 6 over 2. Here you're using the property of, of radicals. All right, and what that means is all you're doing is you're taking 24 in such a way and you write it in such a way that you, you're bringing out whatever perfect square that's in there. So, you write 24 as 4 times 6. You could have wrote it as 8 times 3, but it does you no good because there's no perfect square. So 4 times 6, 4 is a perfect square. Now, what's the square root of 4? 2. So now you're left with 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6 over 2. I forgot to mention that 2 times 1 up there. Remember the A value was 1, 2.
So now what's that going to equal to? That's going to equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. That cancels out. So the solutions of the equations are 3 plus the square root of 6 and 3 minus the square root of 6. All right, now for those of you know, for those of you who may not have understood how we ended up with a 3 there and that 2 canceling out and then that 6 being reduced, here's how. Here's another way to do it. All right, now here's the original um, situation. You got 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6 over 2. Now look at this 6 and the 2, right? What's the greatest number that can go into both 6 and 2? That's going to end up being 2. All right, 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 2 one time. So there's a 1 right there that you don't see. So once again, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So now... What's 2 divided by 2? Well, that's going to cancel out. That's going to be gone, and that's gone. So what do you have left? 3 plus or minus 1 times the square root of 6. And you can rewrite that as 3 plus or minus the square root of 6. So that's how they got from there to there. Example 2, check the solutions of an equation. Check the solutions of the equation from example 1. Solution. The solution of x squared minus 6x plus 3 equals 0 are 3 plus the square root of 6 and 3 minus the square root of 6. You can check each solution by substituting into the original equation. Check x is equal to 3 plus the square root of 6. Write the original equation. x squared minus 6x plus 3 is equal to 0. Substitute 3 plus the square root of 6 for x. So every place we see x, we're going to put 3 plus the square root of 6. So in place of x squared, we put in 3 plus the square root of 6 squared minus 6 times 3 plus the square root of 6 plus 3. We multiply. Okay, now after substituting, we got to multiply. So we got 3 plus the square root of 6 squared. To multiply that, we use a FOIL. So 3 plus the square root of 6 squared means 3 plus the square root of 6 times 3 plus the square root of 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times the square root of 6 is 3 times the square root of 6. 6, the square root of 6 times 3 is 3 times the square root of 6. The square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is equal to the square root of 36. So we bring our 9 down. These two are the same. So we end up with 6 times the square root of 6. Not 16, but 6. And then the square root of 36 is 6. And notice it's the same thing they have over here. 9, 6 times the square root of 6. Remember now, not 16. And then 6. That's that 6 right there. All right, so now here we got a negative 6 times 3. That's a negative 18. A negative 6 times the square root of 6. That's going to be a negative 6 times the square root of 6. And we bring down our 3. Okay, now we add all our terms. We add all our terms to simplify. All right, so I get 9 plus 6, that's 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. A positive 18, when combined with a negative 18, that's 0, so that's gone. Now I got a positive 6 times the square root of 6 and a negative 6 times the square root of 6, so that's gone. So we end up with 0 is equal to 0. Since this is true, that means that this solution checks. So 3 plus the square root of 6 is a solution for this system. Okay, since we're running out of time, I don't have time to break down this entire uh, situation here, but it's the same steps as I did up in this check right here. And this check right here is the same thing, except we got to be aware of that minus sign. Okay, but when you get finished um, multiplying everything out and adding everything out, you end up with zero is equal to zero. All right, and that concludes today's lesson.